So the BBC presenter and prominent naturalist Chris Packham has advocated for the harassment of MPs outside their own homes. Of course, he won't call it this. He will say it's legitimate protests and he's against violence. Um, but I think it's worth talking a little bit about this because I think it is a good example of the sort of um, arrogance that you get on the self-righteous left so often that they their rights trump the rights of others. Um, I'm just going to read this out. It's by Peter Chappell in The Times. That's C H A P P. E L L, uh, March the 5th, this is what I'm reading out. Um, the BBC presenter Chris Packham has insisted that Just Stop Oil has a right to protest outside the homes of MPs, despite fears over the safety of politicians. Um, I'm just going to read this straight out there and add some of my take, rather than sometimes I interrupt my own flow. I'll resist the temptation to do that. The Conservation of 62 said that the right of protesters to target the homes of MPs should be preserved as long as her action was non-violent. Packham's comments came as Rishi Sunak warned that mob rule was a threat to the country as protests over the conflict in Gaza continue. I think that we need a portfolio of protests basically because we need a radical flank and just stop oil is seen by many as that radical flank, Packham told Times Radio. They are the people who in some people's minds go a step too far and that might be, you know, standing outside an MP's house. But the fact is, uh, they are motivated, as am I, uh, by a manifest fear for the health of our future. And that is on a foundation of understanding of very good science. We listen to the science. The science tells us we have to act. Last Wednesday, the Prime Minister urged police to do more to stop disruptive protests. Sunak said democratic institutions neither, but needed better protection from intimidation, disruption, subversion and make Gaza protests outside Parliament and MPs' homes. Reports on Sunday suggested that ministers are considering proposals to ban MPs and councillors from engaging with protest groups as part of plans put forward by Lord Walmy, excuse me, Lord Walmy, the government's advisor on political violence and disruption. Just Stop Oil's tactics have been tested already with protests before Christmas outside the homes of Sunak and Sir Keir Starmer. A Just Stop Oil source previously said that targeting MPs at home was not off the cards by any means, but reaffirmed the group's commitment to non-violence. Packham said he was on the same sheet as Just Stop Oil and it was acceptable to protest outside an MP's home with Peaceful. We in the UK, for all the laws that have been radically uh, changed in very recent times, have to preserve that right to protest. What Just Stop Oil want is on their t-shirt. They want a rapid just transition away from fossil fuels to a healthy renewable energy system so it would support a breadth of protest. That doesn't mean that you and I need to go and stand outside MPs' houses. I'm taking a perfectly legal approach, a perfectly democratic one, which is available to me as a citizen of the UK. But yes, we're on the same sheet. Brendan Cox, widower of the murdered MP Joe Cox, told Times Radio that protesting outside an MPs' house is an act of intimidation. He said it's absolutely vital that we protect the right of protest, and that can be vigorous protest. It can be annoying. Uh, protest, it could be an irritant. What can't be though is intimidation. Being outside an MP's house is clearly an act of intimidation, almost no matter how they behave. Two ministers wrote to chief constables urging them to protect the homes of politicians after heated demonstration by an anti by anti Israel protesters outside the Dorset House of the Conservative MP Tobias Elwood. Such tactics have been strongly criticised with calls for police to be extremely robust in response. So there's a few things to break down with this. Firstly, uh, you know, Packham is regurgitating the same nonsense that's been spun out about to stop oil since their formulation, which is that, oh, they're just interested in the planet, they're following the science. What he fails to mention is that the brainless stunts, aside from having very, very, very little public support, uh, have utterly failed as a, as a method. They haven't overturned, overturned a single policy they haven't influenced a single policy, at least not under this government. We'll see what happens under Labour. Um, but they've been a complete and utter failure. So Packham has to accept that their methods do not correspond to their supposed cause in the sense that they haven't changed a damn thing. Um, and this is this is what really grates on me about eco-zealots. You, you cannot have dialogue with them. You cannot 
talk to them about the method of protest because in their mind, oh, it's the planet, it's the planet, it's the planet. So I'm going to vandalise this uh, old master's painting, but it's for the planet. You can't reason with that mindset. You know, they're not targeting energy companies, maybe Greenpeace is, but certainly not just Stop Oil and other such groups. Now, the thing about uh, ministers not making protest uh, leaders, I would say it depends on the type of protest. Certainly, um, I think elected politicians have to listen to concerns and anger if there is peaceful protest. But I think if you have a group like Greenpeace, who on the eve of a big meeting with the government, I understand they were scheduled to have some meeting on environmental issues, which you would think that they will be all for. They decided in their wisdom to scale the home of Rishi Sunak in North Yorkshire and unveil these black banners. I think I made a video about this. And I have to say there was a follow-up by someone from GB News who then went to their headquarters, made himself a cup of coffee and, you know, gave them a taste of their own medicine. Um, so, you know, that was stupid because all they'd done was then they weren't invited to the meeting. This is what I really dislike about green groups. They're infantile. They cannot see that they burn bridges with their stupid tactics. And they are stupid tactics because blocking roads, vandalising paintings and generally making a nuisance of themselves, they will say, oh, but it's, it's getting debate about the subject. As I've said time and time again, it's most of the conversation in light of those incidents is not about climate change. It's about their stupidity. Um, I have zero respect for Greenpeace and even less respect for uh, these nasty anti-social groups that just stop oil. And I think Packham's a prat, to be quite honest. Now, it's worth mentioning Packham himself has been subject to harassment. And worse, he had um, his property subject to arson. He's been um, abused by pro-hunt people, for example, due to his conservation work, which I condemn. Uh, you know, I condemned it at the time and I still do. But my challenge to Chris Packham, if he really believes this, if he really believes that people should have a right to gather outside the homes of MPs, um, will he extend that to all public figures? After all, he's a public figure. He's pontificating his views. He's advocating a certain position. So would it then follow that protesters could peacefully go to his home and just stay outside, maybe have megaphones saying they dislike his green zealotry, um, you know, hold up placards saying he's, he's a supporter of Just Stop Oil or whatever they want to say, as long as they're peaceful. Because this caveat of peaceful, it really is subjective. I mean, I suppose you could say the very fact that they, they're not throwing punches and they're not throwing Molotov cocktails kind of makes them peaceful. But I would argue that if you're deliberately seeking to hurt the public, as they have done, I'm talking about just stop oil, that's not peaceful. That's a malicious intent. That is actually aggressive because it may not be physical violence, but it's aggressive in the sense that you're deliberately trying to stress people out. You're deliberately trying to mess with people's lives. I would say that it's a hostile act. It's not a peaceful act. It's a hostile act. Now, I would totally support banning protests outside MPs' homes. And this is why. Politicians uh, make decisions about people's lives. So yes, they should be subject to criticism. Um, I absolutely support criticising them online. I mean, there's MPs that have angered me. Laura Trott, the Tory MP, when she came out with her ignorance about disabled claimants, um, made me angry. I think when politicians make controversial statements, they should take all the flack that comes their way. Uh, short of threats. I think um, there should be freedom to call them names. I think there should be freedom to say they're a disgrace, to challenge them, to do everything short of threats, like I'm going to go to your house or, you know, make physical threats against them. Um, you know, if you're in public life and you're making decisions about people's lives, yes, it comes with the territory. You need tough skin. But someone's home is crossing a line. And remember, a lot of MPs have young families, so their spouses, their children aren't asking to be in public life. So what Packham and other such apologists for this kind of protest fail to recognise is they may think they're targeting the MP, but they're actually extending that to the MP's family. What if the MP's children want to go to school or need to go to school? 
Um, you know, it's harassment. It's absolutely harassment. And I do think that should be blocked. There's absolutely no need for it. Um, because this isn't a case of we want to have a dialogue with the politician and debate with them. The clear purpose is to harass them and nothing else. Um, so I would ban it. Absolutely. And as for ministers being blocked from making protests, as I would say, it depends on the nature of the protest. I think as a blanket thing, no, I would be against that. But definitely if you get the likes of Greenpeace that target Rishi Sunak's home and then say, oh, but we want to talk to him about our concerns. Idiotic. Absolutely idiotic. So, um, yeah, I think Chris Packham is a prat. I think he's an apologist for Just Stop Oil. Um, and he can claim that he supports non-violent methods. You support harassment, Chris Packham. We've had MPs murdered in this country in recent years. Joe Cox, uh, Sir David Amos. Now, you may say, oh, but Just Stop Oil will never do that. Well, what about the pro-Gaza demonstrators? You know, some of them are unquestionably Islamists. It was an Islamist who killed Sir David Amos. What if the temperature was risen so much, the anger was so much, that they did take matters into their own hands? It hasn't happened so far, but given that MPs have been murdered in this country in recent years and physically attacked, it doesn't mean it can't happen. I support the right to criticise MPs. I support the right to protest insofar as it doesn't deliberately mess with the public and it isn't engaging in criminality and it's not harassing people in that sense. But I think um, that crosses a line. So... You know, Chris Packham, if he really believes this, he will have to accept then that there would be a right to do that outside his house. Also, will he support for right wing protesters? You know, if you get a group of protesters who are angry about legal migration, will he support their right to go outside the Home Secretary's house, for example? So he has to be consistent if he believes this. I personally think it is crossing a line. I personally would make it illegal. Because whatever people think of MPs, they have families. The families don't deserve that. And just uh, off the top of my head, George Galloway can't stand the man. I think he's odious. But I would even draw a red line there. I wouldn't advocate going to his house. I think he deserves to be mercilessly condemned in Parliament, in public life, on TV, and everywhere else, but not at his own home. Um, yeah, so Packham's a prat. You know, that's my position. Let me know your thoughts.